Yeah. So, All yay. Over. <laughs> so, welcome to Homegirl Talk, everyone. I am your host, Mar Yvette, and I am so excited because tonight we have a very special guest, you know, here at Homegirl Talk, homegirltalk.com. We always keep it real about anything and everything. And <laughs> tonight definitely qualifies. I have Alexandra James, who, along with her husband, Jack Zachary James, uh, comprise the satanic doo-wop group called Twin Temple. Yes, yes, you heard that right. Satanic duo. <laughs> Never heard of such a thing until I met these two. Um, and they are from here in Los Angeles. So let me bring on Alexandra. And we are going to get our conversation started. Hey, girl. Yes. Hey. <laughs> so thank you so much for being on Homegirl Talk and sharing your story and telling us um, a little bit more about yourself, your band. Yeah, uh, you're for having process. me, Mar. <laughs> yes. So just a quick little background. So Alexandra and I met, I don't want to say many moons ago, but we met, you know, several years ago. I uh, had her uh, and Zach on Good Day LA uh, a few times. She has an incredible voice. Her husband's an incredible guitar player. They just have this uh, amazing musicality and very yeah. much in, uh, in, in tune as far as your voice, Alex, is very much like uh, an Amy Winehouse, a Janis Joplin, just you've got that that guttural, just, I, I can't even describe it. It's just, it's fantastic. You have to listen to their music. Aww, thank you. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm not just saying that, it's the truth. So you have to check out Twin Temple. So anyhow, we kind of known each other over the years and follow each other on social media. And when I started Homegirl Talk, of course, I want to talk with, you know, different uh, women, you know, specifically and interesting topics. And so when I recently started noticing on Alex's Instagram <laughs> page, girl, you know where I'm going with this. Girl, I know I where you're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I started seeing some things and I was like, yeah. what is going on here? So yes, yeah. it was the satanic part that my Christian sensibilities were like, oh my God, what is happening? What, what yeah. happened to Alexandra and Zachary? <laughs> They've gone over to the dark side. Um, but, you know, but very seriously. So that's kind of, yeah. you know, we want to talk about your music, of course, because that is your creative outlet. That is what you do. Yeah. You're your artist. And the music is really quite incredible. Um, but I wanted to talk to you just on a personal basis and, you know, kind of yeah. sharing the story with our audience and make sure you go on homegirltalk.com. I know that you were sharing earlier today, Alex, so I appreciate that with, um, you guys have yeah. a lot of fans. So watch <laughs> us on homegirltalk.com. We have our little watch live button. And I actually got some questions as well, Alexandra, for you from a Ooh, few okay. of our, um, our audience members, but I wanted okay. to ask you, um, first, just to get it started. Yeah. Why? Satanism, why would somebody become a Satanist and what is the appeal? Right. Well, I mean, I think the appeal really is that it's a religion or a philosophy that places the highest value on the self. Um, mm -hmm. Satan, I mean, a lot of people think that if you're a Satanist, you're embracing evil yes. or um, hatred or something like that that but really for us satan is a symbol so it's a symbol okay. of self-empowerment it's a symbol of knowledge and it's a symbol i think in a lot of ways of um rebellion uh and not wanting to necessarily be part of the status quo or conform to moral codes if they don't make sense to us on a personal level so i mean i think it really the appeal for me personally is that it recognizes that um, there's no one size fits all. Mm -hmm. That basically, because there's, I mean, so many different kinds of individuals that you can really, um, it, it exalts the individual self. So it's really about freedom of expression and freedom to be who you are. Um, and then, I mean, to address the second part of your question, like how, how do you become a Satanist or, you know, <laughs> why? Um, I mean, I've always felt that it's sort of, Anton LaVey had a quote that basically you're not, a Satanist isn't made, you're sort of born a Satanist. It's really a, a set of values 
um, that either resonates with you or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Satanism doesn't seek to convert people or convince people that it's correct or even mind or bother what anybody else is doing. This is just Mm -hmm. about um, something that really resonates with you or not. And I think um, the beauty is there's a lot of different avenues within it because it does recognize that humanity is essentially infinite and um, there's infinite paths for you to explore um, within the self. So that's sort of how and why Satanism for, you know, resonates with me. <laughs> so y- you brought up a lot of points and of course my head's a little bit spinning, yeah. but I, so <laughs> one of our homegirl talk um, uh, audience members, uh, Jessica Jimenez Jones wanted to yeah. know, so this kind of speaks, you know, you were saying you were born a Satanist versus, you know, becoming or, or joining a, a cult, yeah. which, you know, yeah. were, were you raised a Satanist? I, I mean, are, are you part of a, a, a Satanist family? No, no, not at all. (laughs) How, how did, when did this become like, when did you do, do you use a term like, uh, you know, coming out when, when you publicly shared uh, that you and Zach uh, are Satanists, um, how did your family respond? And how has it impacted your relationships with, with family and friends, if at all? Yeah, I mean, I think there's always the shock, right? Because Satanism is a really misunderstood philosophy or religion. I think people, as I mentioned before, tend to think that all of a sudden I'm out here drinking like the blood of virgins and killing babies or something. Yes, girl, (laughs) yes. And and slaughtering lambs and not being very vegan about it, yes. (laughs) Well, if we're going on that topic, I mean, I always like to point to the fact that God told Abraham to murder his baby. Mm. So at the at the last minute he didn't, he murdered an animal. Now, that's not anywhere in satanic scriptures. So ah. I'm just just saying. But there, but there, but <laughs> there no is a lot of reference blood. to human or animal sac- sacrifice. Right. I mean, okay, yeah. Is that more like <laughs> the, the symbolism stuff. and the artistry of it? Or is that how you that's- interpret it? Okay. Yeah, I mean, the blood, first off, I mean, I think with that set of imagery, we love old horror movies. We definitely gravitate towards the dark side. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think the main thing with that when we're, you know, performing and as part of like the world we create on stage, it's really playing with a lot of um, fears and phobias that people have, Mm -hmm. I think, about the dark side of humanity about Satanism and particularly I think with women, Um, Mm, you know, we're kind of playing with these archetypes of what it means to be a witch or what it means to be in cohorts with the devil, because basically Mm. any woman throughout history, right. That held power um, Mm. or who had mastery of their self was branded as a witch. And there are thousands of women throughout history and other marginalized people who have literally been murdered um, on suspicion mm-hmm. of them being a witch. So well, Salem witch I trials think, is the perfect example exactly, of that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I mean, it really, I think that calling someone as, you know, a Satanist or a devil worshiper has always just been a way of systematically othering and oppressing Mm. people to take away their power. So we're really taking these symbols of, you know, a powerful woman in command on stage. um, And a lot of these fears like, oh, she must be drinking blood, you know, she must be casting spells. And we're really recontextualizing. Yeah, exactly. Um, We're really recontextualizing these symbols. Um, as now a mode of self-empowerment rather than something that can be used against me as a woman. So, (laughs) do you, um, you know, you bring up another point too. So my first thought was, and and I mentioned this to you too, when we were, you know, putting this um, conversation together, I said, Hey, you know, I equate Satanism, Satanists, with devil worshipers, because to me, Satan is the Satan that I learned about in the Bible, which is with the horns, you know, I don't know if he's red or he really has horns, but he is the embodiment, (laughs) right? He is the embodiment of everything evil and bad and horrible. And he wants us to, um, he wants to destroy the world. He wants to destroy us, steal our happiness. 
so um, one, I think we have to get back to how did your family and friends react? Were you alienated? Were you afraid that, you know what, maybe I shouldn't publicly share this? Um, <laughs> and two, do you worship the devil? Is, it, is Satanism and, and devil worship, are they one and the same? Um, I don't think they're one in the same. I mean, mm. we as Satanists do not believe that there's a person running around with red face paint and the horns and the mm -hmm. tail, nor do we worship said fictional character. I mean, okay. we're, we really see Satan as a character from mm -hmm. Christian mythology, mm -hmm. and we're using it as a symbol. So as I mentioned before, um, Satan for us is a symbol of nonconformity, of a search for knowledge, and an exaltation of the self and the individual will. So there's no, there. I, I hate to break it to you, but there's no <laughs> midnight blood ceremony no. or animal or baby sacrifice. <laughs> there's, there's no weird cult. Um, right. or anything like that. <laughs> but, but you are well, kind of playing with that symbolism. Us, uh, <laughs> right. Unless but you, you are playing with show. that. Yes. yes and, and I have seen a little bit of the video of, of your show. And again, when people think of, um, uh, you know, when I think, okay, I, and I know other people too, but when I think of um, satanic music or, you know, the stuff that I was raised with, because I was raised Christian, um, and I still consider myself a Christian. I still, you know, believe in God and follow the tenets that, you know, that Christ taught. I, I thought, you know, I believe that he was sort of the ultimate rebel to talk and preach about love and helping your yeah. neighbor and treating others the way you want to be treated, not judging, uh, spreading love. Uh, you know, when everybody else is uh, chasing material things and not giving a crap about their neighbor, that's what's going on right now, because that's just human nature. Absolutely. So you know, so I see Jesus as like a, an ultimate rebel. Um, what, where was I going with this? Oh, but you know, so also my ideas from my youth were satanic music is, uh, you know, it usually sounds very harsh. It's heavy metal. Yeah. It's like, you know, even <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne, who I met years, you know, how I, who I've since met, you know, ha have met and he's like, oh my God, he's such a nice guy. People he and music head off a bat. Right. Yes, yes, yes. So people who do these crazy things um, and are worshiping the devil because we have seen them traditionally as being, you know, the same thing. Uh, they're into these uh, occult like scary things, you know, and, and, and you've said the dark side. So, yeah, I think it's what you're trying to do, maybe what you're doing. And I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you are. um you're, you're changing the way we're um, talking about or seeing it. Like you're reclaiming that, um, that imagery where I might see it as very dark and like, dang, isn't, you know, isn't the world dark enough already? Why do you have to yeah. hone in on so much more darkness? It, I, I mean, mean it, it, I, it's, yeah, totally. I, I think that for me, the true darkness is not stage blood in a theater or, you know, ritual incantations. To me, the mm. real darkness is what you were talking about is what humans are doing to one another. Mm. Um, and as a Satanist, I don't believe that there is um, some devil that's running around making humans do evil things to one another. I believe that each individual has free choice and mm -hmm. free will. And that's the nature of our experience here as a human. So I personally believe that the true darkness is what humans do. And it it's not um, drinking blood from a chalice on stage. You know, that being said, I do feel that one of my, one of our ultimate goals as a Satanist is to transcend um, these, you know, real binary ideas of uh, good, bad, hmm. God. Yeah, it's, it's devil, what are the other right. mother, whore, light, dark. I mean, as mm. humans, we're a spectrum and we I think, you know, when we go on stage, we're just trying to um showcase all aspects of the human experience and not repress certain aspects of ourselves. So for us, it's just really about synthesizing things and not seeing things as these binary you know, oppositions. Um, that's kind of the goal. 
So when you're on stage as Twin Temple and you you uh, recently played the, is it the Ace Theater? No, yes. Ace Hotel the Theater. Is it called the Ace yes. Theater? Yeah, the Ace Theater. Yeah. It so, was at the Ace Hotel downtown. Beautiful yeah, and theater. So I saw a little bit of that and it's like the chalice and the human skull. And I don't know if that's yeah. really a real human skull girl. But um, so <laughs> like, I'll never tell. So, <laughs> What is what well, is the one on stage isn't real. We we oh. we keep that one at home. Oh my god, it's it's your it's a treasure. Uh, <laughs> but do you, from your former from the, the the music that you used to make in the past to your your new incarnation as Twin Temple, you and Zach going out there still creating music that to me makes me want to get up and dance. It's very yeah, you know absolutely. upbeat and it's doo wop, right? So it's yeah. got a little bit of that vintage feel again, like mm. Amy Winehouse, a little bit you know. Um, got a little bit of that soulful rock and roll Janis Joplin. What are your, um, has your audience changed? Is it a, a darker, you know, everybody's wearing black, black lipstick, black nails. Is, is it a, a harder crowd? Is it the same crowd? What, what's been the feedback for you? And what's, what's the experience been like? Um, I feel like our fans and our crowd overall are my, marked by an overwhelming sense of inclusivity. Mm. I would say people who come to see our shows have an open mind. Mm -hmm. um, it's intersectional and we don't judge anybody based on who they are as a person, whether that's their sexual you know, preference, whether it's their mm -hmm. race or gender. Um, so I would say overall, it's um, it's a group that's marked by tolerance and com compassion and is, I think, uh, openness. Um, you know, it's a whole spectrum of people. And then I would also say that the people who come to our shows love rock and roll. <laughs> <'Cause we're, laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, we love classic American music. And I think, you know, Satan is one, you know, aspect of what we do. But at the end of the day, we really want to carry the torch of all these amazing artists that we love. And mm -hmm. our number one passion is classic American music and, you know, contributing to that conversation, keeping it alive in, you know, however we can. <laughs> do you feel like music is a gift? Uh, you know, so a lot of us, I was just going to say, do you feel like music is a gift from God that you, you've been giving? Because you're obviously very talented. So... Mm -hmm. Do you have a, do, do you believe like, uh, you know, what you're telling me, what you're saying, it, it really does uh, make me, it, it doesn't change what I believe, but it is making me rethink certain things. So like, I believe, you know, people get certain gifts from God, like you can right. sing. I can't, like I could <laughs> sing, but girl, please, you're not going to want to listen to it. You're not going to go pay, you know, to, to watch me in concert you have a gift. So do you, yeah. where do these gifts come from? Or do you think we're just kind of like, you know, some, just like some people are born with brown eyes. Some people can sing, some people can write, some people can, you know, uh, play the banjo. Right. Do, do, do you, do you feel like Satan gives you these gifts? It, you know, I think I, I think I gave myself this gift. I think I mm -hmm. worked my ass off for almost mm -hmm. 20 years now to become a great singer um, I think I rehearsed for like three hours a day for about seven years straight with a vocal coach. And I oh think I gosh. really wanted it. Right. Um, that being said, I think um, Satanism very much is about logic. So I think you have to use your critical mind when approaching anything. And if you work really hard for 20 years and rehearse your ass off and you're still kind of can critically look at yourself and think, I'm not still good at this. I can't sing in key still or whatever. You have to mm -hmm. use your logical mind to say, okay, maybe I should pursue something else. <laughs> right, right. At a but certain I point, don't, right? <laughs> I don't think that, um, you know, I didn't come out of the womb, you know, like some amazing singer or anything. I had to work really, really hard <laughs> to wow. get where you, I am. You've done I a great job. Be, you know, <laughs> thank you. But so um, tell us about your new album. Sorry. Yes, we're yeah, yeah. Um, we're so excited about the new album. It comes out Friday the thirteenth, which of is course, so <laughs> of course, <laughs> we had to pick a spooky day. <laughs> so it's um, is it called Twin Temple or what's it called? Yeah, it's self-titled Twin Temple. Mm -hmm. um, How many songs? And there's ten songs, and then there's a secret track on vinyl and CD of a. Um, 
a group satanic ritual we did girl with a group girl. of friends <laughs> come on girl are we gonna have You'll to like have back to mask to it are we gonna back mask to like play it backwards and it's gonna have all these secret crazy messages remember that remember love, that the whole i love the whole satanic panic back mask thing we we actually <laughs> thought about back masking some like weird stuff oh in gosh. there but we kind of ran out of time but um yeah, the album I'm really excited about. We actually cut it all live to tape at Jazz Cat Studio in Long Beach. And wow. that was actually a departure for us in terms of working that way because the two singles we have out on Spotify at the moment and the two videos that we have, we like slaved over over the course of maybe four or five months one summer. Um, and multi-tracked everything. I mean, we literally did all the vocal comps. We sat in there mm -hmm. with a microscope and we were just tweaking and Zach and I are both very much perfectionists. So we just mm -hmm. felt like, oh, we have to make it so perfect. And we spent so much time. Cutting live to tape is such a freeing experience. Like we just- Because once it's studio, done, it's done. Mm -hmm. You play it a few times um, and then you choose your favorite take. And mm -hmm. we literally cut the entire record in about a day and a half. So wow. it was really quick. It was just like, get in, get out, no slick digital, you know, recording techniques or anything like that. Not like we used auto tune or Melodyne or anything in the past, but yeah, it's really raw. So what you'll hear is basically what it was, which was seven of us in a room playing music, pressing record and get capturing that on a tape and i don't i'm not sure i'll ever go back to uh slaving away in a studio like losing my mind <laughs> again. right now you got I mean, that's down and dirty a little bit but but it sounds it down and raw, dirty like you're saying yeah but and it's, it's, it's super like raw it's that yeah exactly it was that moment and i loved it and i mean zach and i too like i was saying before i mean we are obsessed with classic American music and we're- Who are some of your favorites? Who, who are some oh. of the artists? Tell us so people get a sense of, I wanted to play your video or at least a snippet, but then I was afraid of like copyright or we're going to get in trouble, even though it's your music. But I, you yeah. know, it, it's hard to talk about your music without really hearing it. So give people uh, a little, uh, a little uh, description, like who are some of your influences? Oh my gosh. I mean- how much time do you have to talk about? Uh, this? Are we just we have about, about seven more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, jazz, early, you know, doo wop like mm -hmm. Fats Domino, Chuck Berry, mm -hmm. Buddy Holly, Roy Orbison, and then I mean, if we're getting into the '60s, I love girl groups. I love the Ronettes. I love the Shangri Las. Basically anything Phil Spector produced. I mean, I love- Was he a Satanist? So much. No, he. I don't believe he was. <laughs> Is he dead? Did Phil Spector die or you know, he just killed somebody? Yeah. I don't remember. Is he still in jail? You know what? I don't even know where Phil Spector is right now. Full disclosure, last I heard he was in jail or something. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, but all those all those people that you're talking about, the bands, all of that is in your music. Uh, everybody you yeah. described, I, I hear that. You know, and yeah. your, your videos are very, you know, uh, lush and they draw you in. But at the same time, like there's one, it's called Let's Hang Together with oh, you yeah. and Zach. <laughs> girl so it's just like <laughs> again it's just like it's so lush and it's seductive but it's also very dark and that and i'm just like why like what wh why does the darkness appeal to you so much <laughs> you might ask me girl why does pink you know why do pink and unicorns appeal to you so much you know it just I does like that pink microphone <laughs> yeah. You know, Jane Mansfield was a Satanist and she had an entirely pink house. So Satanist girl. Like pink too, girl. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. Is that microphone satanic? Is that a hidden message? <laughs> oh my God. Can we talk about uh, hidden messages for a second? Uh, by the way, everybody, please, if you're, if you're just tuning in or if you've been watching, make sure you um, check into homegirltalk.com. I got to give our, our shout outs. Um, but I did have a question from somebody in Twi on Twitter who asked yeah. me to ask you, does Satanism have anything to do with the Illuminati? Because people are like obsessed with Illuminati. You guys are rock stars. 
what yeah. is the connection, girl? Just tell us. Like, give us the I dish for real. Have nothing to do with the Illuminati, <laughs> and it has nothing to do with Satanism. Like, do you know what's up with the Illuminati? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's up with the Illuminati. I'm I'm not in the Illuminati. <laughs> that, is that the symbol? <laughs> I don't even want to do it. I don't even know if that's the symbol. <laughs> oh my god! It's the triangle of manifestation. It's a magical symbol. Ah, okay. Okay. Um, so maybe I'm in the Illuminati and that's how I got my powers. Maybe. Did you have to sell your soul to the devil to become a rock star? Yeah, it was a pretty, um, cut and dry deal. It's pretty straightforward. I just give my soul for all eternity to the devil. (laughs) And I was granted with magic powers. Do you see how she's just like playing? (laughs) <laughs> I a, see what you're doing there. It was a standard contract. Did you have to contract. sign with blood or you, you were able to use a, a regular pen? Well, you know, the thing about real blood, it's kind of a biohazard. So yes. I asked Satan if I could just use the stage blood that I use on stage. And he said, yeah. He said, so. sure, no problem. Hey, tell me about the significance <laughs> of 666. And that's going to bring me into the next question because you guys are doing something special with that. Right. But what, what, what is the well, significance of 666? I mean, 666, it's kind of complex, but at its core, it's basically a numerological symbol for the sun. Oh, uh, really? Of course, it's a number. Yeah, it's a number that has gotten, like with all things satanic, completely uh, demonized within popular culture to mean, I don't know, evil or something mm-hmm. like that. But right. Basically, it's if you believe in numerology and that mathematics is a way to describe everything in the world, 666 mm-hmm. is the number of the sun. And you can Google it and find out more if that piques your interest. But okay. <laughs> it's also right. just like 666 is an obvious number associated with the devil. So we had to do 666 copies of our of our record. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, yeah. you're tying it all in, but you're also yeah. contributing six dollars and sixty six cents yes, from every order of twenty dollars or more yes. from your online shop on yes. Twin Temple. Is it TwinTemple.com? Yes, it is. Yeah. To Ooh, fun to, uh, to a fundraiser. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about the fundraiser um, and and why this was important to you. Yeah, um, really excited about it. Actually, we're teaming up with our friends that have an amazing company. It's run by three badass women. It's called mm-hmm. Sisters of the Black Moon. And okay. we're raising money to cover some of the legal fees um, to get families reunited at the border. So I mean, wow. as you can imagine, the legal fees are super duper expensive. And wow this is basically going to help with the cost of getting people reunited with their children. So any order, $20 or more, you can buy records, shirts, whatever you want. Um, we're going to donate 666 to this fundraiser. And I believe we have close to $500. Um, and you can also donate directly to sisters of the black moon if you want. Wow. (laughs) So, so Satanists actually help other people. Uh, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) You're not, I mean, you're not evil. You're, do you you pray to, do you, like, do you say, here's another question from our audience. Do you, do you pray, like, do you say grace before a meal or do you pray to the devil before going to bed? Like, what, what is that all about? (laughs) What, What is that like? I mean, Again, there's no devil that we, we don't believe in an external uh, force that holds power over us or some Mm. evil sway over our souls. There's, there's no devil. Um, Mm. We don't. So you're a Satanist, but there is no, but you're saying there is no devil. Not a literal devil. I believe there's a devil in popular culture. I believe that the devil has been endowed with a huge amount of uh, social and cultural anxieties. I mean, I I kind of think he's just sort of the ultimate scapegoat, really. Mm. Um, But no, there's no praying to this, to a devil or anything. That being said, grace, yeah, absolutely. I think that... um, 
every time I, we eat, we're super thankful for our food. And I think I've seen a lot of scientific studies that show how your thoughts and intentions can affect things like the molecules of water. I don't know yes. if you've seen that experiment. I have. Oh, it's yeah. Super mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah. So Zach and I definitely, I think, put good intentions into our food before we eat it. But we're not thinking, you know, the devil or anything <laughs> for it. Um, but yeah, going back to what you said, absolutely. I think if you, I think the satanic temple is doing a lot of great work. If you look into them, mm. um, they're really fighting for a lot of people's, you know, individual freedoms. And, um, I think fundamentally as a Satanist, we believe that everyone should have the right to find and execute their true will. And that because we are all individuals, um, we're fundamental, we're all individual souls, right? And because Mm -hmm. humanity is so diverse and so different from person to person that fundamentally we should respect that fact about Mm -hmm. humans. Mm -hmm. Um, so when we see things like what a policy, like at our border, that is completely Mm -hmm. marked by just brutality and Mm -hmm. racism and a complete lack of respect fundamentally for human life, we can't stay complicit or, or, you know, silent on the matter because Mm -hmm. essentially, again, as a Satanist, it's one of those things where you don't just follow some kind of dogmatic rule. I mean, some of the things I've heard is, well, they broke the rules, so they right. have to be punished or something. Right. And I'm saying, mm-hmm. no, every human being deserves respect. And in particular, I mean, children are so much more sensitive and have special needs psychologically, physically, and the rest. Mm-hmm. It's just like something that is completely shocking and just shameful and Mm -hmm. you know we're artists so I wish my calling in life was to be a politician or something so that I could get Mm -hmm. down there and maybe Mm -hmm. enact some policies but we're artists so that's kind of our road and our true will in life and I think the best thing we can do is raise awareness through our music and just use our platform in a way to, you know, get other people involved however we can. So when we saw that our friends were doing this fundraiser, um, we were like, how can we get involved? So we kind of brainstormed, well, anyone who buys the record will donate a portion of the proceeds to the fundraiser. Um, because that's you know, a, that's a fair amount of, that, yeah, that's, a, that's a fair amount that you're donating as well. $6 and 66 cents of $20 or more. And you guys do yeah. on twintemple.com, you do have like, is it like incense or you have different things or like little statues? And so yeah. those, do, do those statues, like, how do you say the, the guy's name or, or the thing, ba- Baphomet? Baphomet, Girl. you got it. <laughs> so like, you on a first name basis with uh, him. <laughs> or so, her. So <laughs> like you. it's a hermaphrodite. Okay. So it's like all encompassing, the that's the all inclusiveness. But so yes, do you have you that sort it, of. Girl. You you have that. I'm gonna be stuff. making a Satanist out of you, Mark. Oh, no. I'm I like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put some holy water on you, girl. I'm gonna say in the name of Jesus. I'm not even don't kidding. Don't burn me. <laughs> don't burn me. <laughs> um, no, but like you know, I have a picture of like guardian angels helping the child across the bridge. It's a it's a mm-hmm. you know it's a, it's a classic image. I have a cross because that brings me comfort and yeah. I, I don't pray to those things. Like I know in and of themselves they're not powerful. Right. But Surrounding yeah. yourself with things and people, I believe that bring lightness and happiness and that sort of um, goodness. And so, you know, talking to you, I, I'm still just trying to understand, like, yeah. how does Satan bring that kind of happiness and comfort and peace and sense of goodness? You know, it's hard for me to reconcile those two things because the imagery is dark and I feel like there's enough darkness in the world. Like I just want to not deny it. Like there's stuff, horrible things going on on the border. There's horrible things going on with human trafficking and, you know, women are being, uh, Mm. you know, men and women, but women are are, are particularly throughout history have been brutalized. So I'm not ignoring any of that and living in a fantasy land. I'm just trying to understand like, how do you, how are you drawn to that? 
And maybe I, maybe I never will understand because I'm not drawn to it, but I am curious. Yeah. And, and, and I wanted right. to talk to you because you're somebody that, you know, I've, I've known and it's like, I respect <laughs> you. I, you know, I think you're fabulous. So like, Hey girl, like, let's yeah. have a conversation because I really don't get it totally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think first off, what you said is totally true. You have to pick symbols that resonate with you on a soul level or mm -hmm. a personal level. Mm -hmm. So if images don't call to you, I mean, you, you should go to the symbolism that works for you. And again, mm -hmm. since there's so many different avenues of expression, go with the things that work for you. I think a Satanist uh, would say that it's all about knowing yourself and figuring out those things that work for you and then getting rid of the things that don't work for you. Um, we were talking about Baphomet personally. Um, what that symbolizes is what I was talking about before, which is a synthesis of so-called opposites. So it represents transcending mm -hmm. limited and binary thought. And that's what it really means that he's coming together. Um, he's both got breasts and a penis. He's a synthesis mm -hmm. of genders. And, in, and by incorporating both sides of his self, he's fulfilled. He's also sitting on top of the world and he represents um, basically mastery of himself, of knowledge and of empowerment of their self. So that's why I gravitate towards Baphomet and find it to be an incredibly inspiring um, mm -hmm. and powerful image in terms of uh, how to, how to basically achieve self mastery and how to transcend those things that may limit you. Um, but I think going back to what you said, um, as well, you know, there is so much brutality in the world and there has been so much brutality in the world. And ironically, I mean, the devil was used as a way to brand people as being quote unquote evil. And ironically, the symbol of the devil as somebody evil really came into existence and came into play when you saw major world powers colonizing the rest of the world. The people they encountered had things they wanted, whether it was material items or whether it was, you know, whether they wanted to make them slaves, you know? Mm. Um, so, you know, I really think that historically the idea of calling someone, a, a, you know, a satanic person yeah. was really just a way of oppressing them. And mm. you saw, you see this all over the place when, you know, during the Salem witch trials um, or when, you know, um, the Spanish came to the, you know, new world and they were saying that the Mayans were basically devil worshipers or the Native American cultures as well were called in cohort cohorts with the devil and mm -hmm. their rituals and traditions were called satanic rituals. And so this is the reason why we need to take away what they have. We need to enslave them and we because have they're free evil. reign they're to devils. murder them mm. because they're devils. But really mm. fundamentally it's based in fear. Wow. And yeah. I don't, you know, believe in c operating from a place of fear. And so mm. that's really, I mean, what taking back um, Satan is for me is mm. like, guess what? I, I am that witch. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. So do you, guys, do you guys have, so if that, uh, you know, uh, piqued your interest, do, does twin temple have a show coming up? We actually got a question on uh, YouTube. They wanted okay. you, they want you to talk more about the music. I wish that we could, yeah. maybe if we have another homegirl talk, we could actually play some of the music, Alex, or yeah. that, you guys will, you know, I mean, your voice is out of control. It's just, you, you guys are great. Um, oh, so, you. um, anything else you want to talk about, uh, the music before we, you know, we've, we've, we've already been talking for 40 minutes, girl. And I feel like I'm in hell because I'm melting over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm under lights. Um, it's but is there anything, yeah. Is there anything else you want to say about, uh, your music or, or your message? Do you have a message with your music? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think our message is essentially one 
where, how should I say it best? Um, you sh can be yourself and you should be yourself. And mm -hmm. that's basically the whole point of this human experience. And mm -hmm. um, I think that's essentially, I guess if there was one flag we had to fly with our music, it's just follow what makes you, you and never apologize for it. Mm. And don't be ashamed of who you are. So I, I always come back to my motto is kind of like the Oracle at Delphi had the words above the temple, know thyself. And I like to add to it uh, Shakespeare's quote and to thine own self be true. Mm -hmm. Those two things really sum it up for me. So if I had to say there's one thing we're trying to, you know, get across is, is know thyself and to thine own self be true. <laughs> but in the process, you're going to freak sense. out some people and you're That's okay with fun. that. <laughs> I have to share a quick story that was really sure. exciting for us <laughs> Sure. at a, at the Ace Theater. Um, mm -hmm. We played before Tiger Army. It was such a, a beautiful theater, by the way. Um, it, it is a, and, it's a stunning theater. It's a great hotel. And yeah. quick question is our, our tiger army, are they Satanists they are or they're not, not out <laughs> or we don't want to out them now. Cause I, but are, are they known Satanists? I don't know, but I know they the name tiger Satanists, army, but we did have a really interesting conversation with Nick 13 about some of Anton LaVey's philosophy. Oh, okay. Anton LaVey had a lot of really interesting things to say about basically art and creation. I mean, he was kind of the ultimate showman. Mm. So we did talk, we did talk with them about that, but they, they're not satanic, <laughs> but they mm -hmm. do love classic American rock and roll. And that's, uh -huh. you know, <laughs> well, I'm sorry, we I interrupted really you. What was the story you wanted to share about oh, the, so the at story? The was we were at the theater and during our set, apparently, um, one, <laughs> a woman ran screaming out of the audience. So, <laughs> oh, because we she was excited she was, about that. She was upset that you guys were, what did she think she was going to go see? I think we scared her. Huh? Oh, oh, well, hello. <laughs> okay. So if you go to twin temple, is it Instagram? If you go to your Instagram page or just go to twin um, yeah. or you go to their, your Instagram page, get ready to be scared. I'm telling you, yeah. this is why I reached out to Alexandra. I yeah. said, girl, <laughs> WTH, WTF, OMG. Is this legit? Like what happened? <laughs> like, girl, like, let me, why are you, who got you into the dark side? But yeah. you know, For I'm, I'm understanding of more. vintage horror movies, Vincent Price. <laughs> oh my gosh, Vincent Price. And is your mom like, are, are your families okay with this? I mean, they love you no matter what. And they're just like, okay, I, I get it. You guys are rock stars. This is whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think my mom would not, my parents would not classify themselves as Satanists, but mm -hmm. underlying their philosophy and the Satanic philosophy is a sense of humanism. So mm. I think that's where we um, connect. And okay, I mean, you know, they're pretty open minded. So they're like, yeah, go do, do you. whatever it is, you know, go do you, girl. <laughs> Do you, girl? And that's what we if, say at Homegirl Talk. Yeah, do exactly. you? So, well, and so that's, that's the same thing, then. Yes, it is. So, you know what it is? I'm just trying to find, um, you know, those little places of commonality. I mean, and mm -hmm. and talking with mutual respect, having a little bit of fun, um, and <laughs> you know, life is serious enough, and life is serious. You know, I understand that, but um, yeah. This was good. This was a good conversation. As they said in The Last Samurai, this was a good conversation. <laughs> so thank you so much, Alex. I really appreciate you taking the time to, you know, uh, come on Homegirl Talk and, and, and speak with us because, you know, I can only imagine uh, you as somebody who, you know, the, I know what it's like to be part of the minority because I'm a brown woman, yeah. you know, and you're yeah. half, you're half Chinese, Korean or right? Half Korean. Half yeah. Korean. So yeah. you might understand some of this too, you know, as a woman of color, you know, um, I'm, I've learned more as I've gotten older and, you know, we've, yeah. we've gotten more information, just, you know, kind of how we've been marginalized, meaning we don't run the world, you know, 
it's typically been like, you know, old white men with all the money and all the power. And so me being part of a group that is the majority, I don't know if it's the majority anymore, but you know, at least in this country or the people I've always known being Christian. And I know Mm -hmm. many Christians do not act like Christians and that really upsets me. Um, So people would judge me based on, Oh, well, you know, there are a lot of people out there right now who are calling themselves Christian and they're like, you know, saying, you know, they don't care about families being ripped apart. They don't care that the poor aren't being taken oh, care of. They don't, you know, they don't care yeah. that the environment is being devastated. And to me, that is not Christ-like at all. So yeah. I understand that too. But I'm just saying you as somebody who is part of, um, and it's not even a, re- a religion, right? But this philosophy of Satanism, which is um, very, I, 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 I would say, misunderstood, very, you know, still like, it's definitely not the mainstream. So for you to come out and publicly talk about it, um, you know, I appreciate that because you're informing me, you're informing the people who are watching this and it's, it's your own individual experience too. I don't think that you are even attempting to speak for every single Satanist, you know, everybody, we all have our own journeys and thoughts about stuff, but Mm -hmm. you know, it, it can't, necessarily be easy to do that i mean and you weren't you weren't known for that publicly when you first started out in your career either yeah so yeah i mean yeah definitely i i agree with you and and i think actually part of what resonates with me with the satanic religion and philosophy is probably shaped by my experience as a woman of color in this country um, Mm. and just growing up being judged or being discriminated against for who I was. And it really kind of instilled that, that outsider mentality within myself. Uh, And it really led me to seek ways to empower myself. And Satanism happened to be something that really resonated with me on a soul level, because at its core, it's, it exalts the self and okay. it, it does not attempt to, you know, convert anybody or, you know, tell somebody that if they don't follow the satanic philosophy, then they're wrong. There is no one right religion or no one okay. right way to be. It's simply about the individual experience. So that really resonates with me because I don't feel that I've ever quite fit in to and I mean does anyone ever feel like they really conform to this quote unquote perfect mold of who society thinks they can be I mean I feel like if you talk to people you know at the end of the day they think well you know this is you know not living up to what society expects of me Mm -hmm. or I'm too short or I'm too dark or I'm too pale or I'm too skinny right there's always something especially Mm -hmm. As a woman, I mean, you're judged so much. So it's like, if I'm going to be judged for something, it may as be, it may as well be because I'm a witch. I mean, I'm going <laughs> to, as a woman in the public, you know, putting myself out there, uh-huh. I've been dragged through the mud for everything down to my hair being too dry. I mean, that was like a whole wow. thread on YouTube once about the dryness of my hair. Wow. So if you're going to pick on me, here I am. I'm that witch. I'm a Satanist. Go ahead. Take your best shot. I don't care. <laughs> girl, once you know again, I mean? she said, do you. <laughs> <laughs> do you, girl. <laughs> All right. If okay. If we're gonna... doing Satan, then do do Satan, girl. <laughs> oh, my God, girl. I don't know. I don't know. Yes, do you, girl. Um, so, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm all, I'm going to go back on everything I said. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you have so, to do like 666 Hail Marys after this conversation. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at my mic just fell. Oh my gosh. Um, that was me. That was the power <laughs> of the devil compelling you. I'm like, <laughs> so uh, Twin Temple album out Friday the 13th. Yeah. Um, go to their website, twintemple.com. Uh, they'll yeah. be donating $6 and 66 cents to the uh say the racist which is the relief yeah um what is it it's something i have it written Uh, down i have it written down too the refugee and immigrant immigrants oh you say it girl center for education and legal services yes there you go so here is a satanist who cares and it's about (laughs) as you're saying it's not about elevating satan so much as it is 
the self. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Thank you, Accepting Alexandra James. <laughs> Accepting people Thank for you, who Maya. they are. It was so fun. It was so fun <laughs> talking to you. I'm completely melting. My bangs have like completely just like attached to my forehead. We look beautiful. Um, uh, as do you. <laughs> So thank you for talking with us. And maybe we'll have another chat. We'll get some feedback yeah. and see, you know, hopefully this was fun. And then we can also incorporate fun. some of your music. Yes. Yeah. Yes, girl. I hope, hope you don't feel too com. sinful. What's that? <laughs> I hope you don't feel too sinful from our conversation. No, but I will <laughs> say a special prayer to Jesus tonight. <laughs> All right, girl. Thank you. Water. Hugs to Zach. Bye, Mar. And we'll talk yeah. to you soon. Bye. <laughs>